All right, where I left off on this project, I had merged everything into one layer. And I did that by holding down Option and then clicking under Layers on Merge Visible. And what that did is it put everything into one layer for me, but underneath I still have all those protected individual layers, even my clone stamp layers that helped smooth things together. You can see how much of the clone stamp is used on the tail, for instance. So in order to cut it out cleanly, instead of trying to do that on each individual layer, because it can get confusing which background belongs to what layer, what little knickknacks and debris are left on the edges, I just combine them all non-destructively, and I erase away from the master layer. Here. Now it can be difficult to see the edges cleanly. In the last video, I did a pretty good job cutting out the tail and the back and the, the top of the head. The always more finesse can be used, but you can see the undercuts there and some of the hair. So some textures are more difficult to cut out than others to clean up, depending on your reference. But I still have a lot to clean up around the bill and around the arms and hands and chest, right? So little things and maybe little areas where clone stamp could still be helpful as, as well as some dodging and burning and around some of the feet. So I didn't get that done by midnight last class or the day of, of the last um, of the last demo. And that's when the assignment two was due. So you guys have till midnight to upload something. And as long as you upload something, then you can always resubmit for a better grade. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go back and try to clean it up to resubmit because I didn't meet all of the, the requirements to cut it out cleanly yet. So going into it, let's just do the basic. I'm gonna use my my eraser, it's all in one layer now, but to see things a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna turn back on my gray background. Because sometimes that checkerboard can be a little confusing. And I'm gonna start this time from the bill. And I have the brush set at 30% hardness. I'm gonna sharpen it up because these textures are a little bit harder to around 80%. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm actually only at 100% right now. Don't zoom in beyond 200%. Otherwise, you're, you're looking at too much detail, and the eye is not going to see that in your print. That's assuming that you're working at a good print resolution. And we're working at our lab resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch, which is 50 more than professional resolution. But if you go to 400, for instance, like I could really obsess over each pixel this way. But if I'm on a time crunch, which professionally and in this class, you almost always will be, it just takes too long. So 200 is a good amount to be zoomed in. Notice that as I'm cleaning up around the edge that I'm paying attention to, I'm leaving debris, and debris is going to happen. That's okay. Because as long as you find the outline edge that you want, and to, to a large extent, you get to define it for yourself, then it's pretty easy to just take your lasso tool, whether it has a feather on it or not, and capture all of that debris. And it's especially easy to see when you have that gray background. Now, just to review again, the ways that you can select to cut out, I can use the magic wand with contiguous on, and I can select matching pixels, and then I can delete all of this, but the problem is it's gonna delete content that I wanna keep because those colors are so similar. So that's why sometimes you just want to go in with your lasso with a feather 
which is another method. I have a three pixel feather here, which is a good kind of general softening because the, the lasso tool doesn't allow you to soften unless you use a clipping mask. So I often just like to use, or the magic wand rather, doesn't allow you to soften selections without a clipping mask. But I like to work very directly with this intro class. So now that I've selected it with my lasso tool, I can hold down shift and I can add things to it. Anything I think was left out. If I think I missed something that's important, I can hold down option and subtract from it. And then because it's a three pixel feather, notice that I have a soft three pixel softening edge there on both sides. And so if I delete twice, it will cut in a little bit even more, which softens it even more. And then I hit Command D to deselect. But sometimes you just want a more direct line. So this is why I'm going in with an 80% brush eraser and I'm finding my sharp edges. So you get to decide how sharp that selection edge should be. And then when it gets arbitrary, like here, what feathers am I keeping? I kind of like to just do it with my eraser. Find that edge. always favoring a little bit more overlap. Keeping in mind the silhouette of the creature. All right, what makes sense? And then maybe going in with my lasso with the three pixel feather, which will soften it a little bit. So it's not so jagged. And catch all that debris. See what that looks like. That looks pretty good. Same thing with the arm. Remember, if there's an edge I want to bring stronger contrast to, I can use the sharpen tool. It doesn't create focus, but it, it heightens the contrast between edges. So the bill is kind of out of focus in some areas. So if I use the sharpen tool, it will bring that back just because it heightens the contrast. And sometimes that's really helpful as you're putting different references together because the different photos of the different animals sometimes have different focal lengths in the photography. And for our creature composite, we want everything in nice sharp focus because it's easy to take focus away digitally. It's difficult to bring it back. Because computers are great tools, but they can't make up information that we don't give them. Now cutting out these feathers. Go around the arm, go back with my eraser, sharpen certain edges. But knowing that feathers and fur are softer edged than the hard edged bill. I can work with the feather in the lasso as well. Get little stray hairs here to cut in. There we go. And now the bottom side of the hand, I'm going to use the lasso again. I'm liking how that's working. I can trim his nails a little bit.
and by zooming in at, at least 100%, you can see where the, the focus can be an issue. So around the talons, because that reference was shot while this golden eagle was flying pretty fast, you get a little bit of motion blur there that ideally we're going to get rid of in our reference, in our design. Then there's a little bit of clone stamping to fill in some of the gaps that's need needed here. All right, so let's use the sharpening tool and bring some focus and clarity back to talents, and then where they still feel soft, I can cut them out with my eraser. Nice little manicure. So because we're going for something believable, just like we did with our landscape, Edge control is really important. Whereas with the landscape, we could have some edges, especially in the extreme foreground and the background that are soft edged and give the illusion of depth. With our creature, ideally everything will be sharp and in focus so that when we place it into a setting, we get to decide where to make its, its focus match. All right. Now again, we're always working on a deadline. We can't always be perfectionists. So these little gaps that I need to fill with, with clone stamp, I will get to. But first, let me just get all the cutouts done. I'm going to soften my eraser a little bit as I get into these really furry legs. Or maybe just go to my lasso because that, that three pixel feather is fairly soft. Because it's really more than three pixels. It's three pixels softening of each pixel that's deleted or selected. And that's on both sides of the pixel. So it gives you a little band of softening. And that's more than just the three pixels. So if you did one pixel softening, that would be like three pixels that are actually affected on each selection. And we get better and better at selecting as we do these tasks. The gray, the gray background helps you see little debris that's there. And whenever you do hand erasing, you often leave little debris. And is it a big deal? Not really. Because once you put it onto a background, there's going to be pixels surrounding everything that gives debris anyway. But it's nice to be able to control your work that way. The reason we do this compositing figurative exercise on creatures rather than on vehicles is because organic material like fur and nails and feathers is a lot more forgiving than man-made machine parts, like the bumper of a Batmobile, for instance. So when in doubt, you can always cut in and make your own shape with organic.